Okay, um, I'll just give some background about me because I have a more, I, I was in um, at U of T before the new programs came in. Our studio was an old funeral home. <laughs> I don't think any of you guys were there <laughs> during that time. And I, so I did uh, BA. I remember, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. I, in my last year we were in the new building but it was like pretty awful acoustic. Like no one wanted to work there. So I actually was never there, but um, I did a BA of architectural design um, and architectural history and theory. So I actually did no classes about structures. I took like three studios and I like avoided architecture at all costs. And here I am now doing a master's of architecture. So um, that's all that is to say, like, um, I think if you have other, like when I was at U of T, I really took advantage of like taking other classes and following other interests. And it's really cool how now I'm kind of like approaching my thesis and it's all kind of come together. And I think just to like a caveat before talking about my portfolio, um, I have a lot of friends on admission committees and here at MIT, they have students on it as well. And one of the things they hear about the most is everything looks the same. Um, so like if you have like weird work or you're like, oh, my portfolio doesn't look like anyone else's. And not that mine is like that weird or anything, but you should definitely embrace like um, who you are and like your personal style and like your more weird stuff because it'll make it stand out and like, in the first few rounds of application, that is the biggest thing is just like it not looking like everybody else's. Um, so yeah, um, my portfolio, I started off with like a little manifesto. Um, you definitely don't need to do this. And uh, one thing I will say about text is um, a lot of people would say, don't put text in your portfolio. It, it is true, most people probably won't read it, but it shows that you have the ability to think critically about your work. Um, and I think that's really important for people admitting um, students to grad school is that not only can you make like visually stunning work, um, you can also think about it in like a original way. Um, and drawings, like architectural drawings especially are hard to understand a lot of the time. So people won't necessarily be able to follow your project. Um, like the previous portfolio you saw, it's very true. Like you, you, can't lay, you usually wanna lay out your work in a way that um, is like visually compelling, um, not necessarily in a way that's like easy to understand the project, but if you have text there, whether it's read or not, it shows like you can think about your work. And I would just say use bolding and like larger text to your advantage. Um, so people can kind of like get a little bit of a vibe of like what it is about. Um, so I'll just go through my projects. Um, I was in, so I started, did architecture and then like my last year I was like, oh, I hate it. I'm gonna do landscape architecture. And then I did some landscape architecture work and I actually graduated and worked in landscape architecture. And I was like, oh, I hate landscape architecture. <laughs> so I went back into architecture. So I kind of have a little mix of both. Um, this is my final landscape. Um, studio I did this little park project um, and yeah I it's just kind of pretty basic stuff I just laid it out um, I one thing no matter like what your work is like I'll, I'll take advantage of white space that's kind of like the basic rules of thumb don't put too much stuff on a page um, I kind of wish I had written more for these things actually I, I went with very minimal captions and I think if I were to go back I would write a little bit more about the work um, and this is one, I did so little studio work at UT that this is like one of my second year projects. Um, we did a lot of hand drawing. This is so weird because like, obviously I was using Rhino and everything, but this professor like forced us to do hand drawings. So it, it was very challenging, like then bringing that into a, a digital format that didn't look really bad um, and a lot of model making. Uh, this is a project I did on my own time. I did a seminar with um, John Harwood that had like left a really big impression on me but it was all written work. So I was like, I took a year off after I graduated and I had like a month of free time. And I was like, how do I represent this like essay I wrote um, in a visual way? And this is definitely not like a well-resolved architectural project, but it was super fun trying to um, take like a written paper and spatialize it. And it was also about spatializing non-spatial things. Um, so I would definitely encourage you if you have like, like there is some merit in going back and editing things. Um, and obviously since this was, not a class project. It was definitely um, no one else had a project like this in their portfolio. Um, so I think that kind of helped me a little bit. Um, and I mean, I don't think there's that much to say about this work, but um, it's just from like the representation class I took um, that you probably don't have anymore. Um, and then some more landscape work. And I one thing about group work, I didn't do that much group work at my time at U of T, but I only, everything I show is work I um, did by myself. I don't show anything that had any other people working on it. That was just like a stance I took. Um, 
I think like was mentioned previously, if there is any work that other people worked on with you, you should definitely be very clear on what your part in the project was. Um, and yeah, so this, I don't even remember what this was, but, and like there's definitely a cringe factor here too, don't worry. Like I remember when I was in my final year at UC and we had a RTA who was a grad student at Daniels, she was his portfolio and I was like, oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. <laughs> so like I, I feel like every year it's getting like so much better, the like quality of um, representation and stuff. But, um, oh, another thing is models. Um, model photos are really, really great to show that you like have a like good level of attention to detail and just like that little bit of post-processing can go a long way. Um, yeah. And then I show some professional work at the end. This is some uh, my last architecture studio. Um, definitely not showing like a full set of plans and sections and everything here. I highly recommend not putting all that stuff in, put a little bit of technical work in, but at the end of the day, people are gonna be trying to get more of a general impression of who you are rather than the fact that you can represent line weights well. Half your class in grad school will be learning that from scratch probably. So it's not a big, it's not that important um, depending on the program that you apply to. So I added a little bit of extracurricular stuff. This is an exhibition I curated um, to show that I just, I don't only do architecture, um, I realize you can't see that. And then this is some professional work I did at an architecture firm. I'm still not 100% sure if I would show that if I did it again, um, but I just wanted to add a little bit of diversity, but I don't, I think it's actually kind of distracting. Um, this next page is professional work as well, um, but I kind of, I worked for like pretty large corporate firms during um, my time at UT because I needed to pay the bills. And I was doing this like pretty like soulless stuff like mathing and feasibility. Um, so I named it how to sell a building because I was trying to be like a little bit cynical about it. And I thought it was hilarious that these tower studies that I did were all kind of like middle fingers. Um, but I, like I said, it's not, I don't think it's that important to have professional work um, in your portfolio unless it's, unless you can have a kind of critical stance on it or unless it's really, if you're very lucky, it's something you're interested in um, academically as well. And the last thing I added was some of my um, film photography. I, have always been really into film photography. I think um, in terms of like what is like trendy right now, um, I think like there's a huge emphasis on like craft and making. So if any of you guys do like pottery or weaving or anything like that, like definitely put that in your portfolio. Um, that will help you a lot. Um, film photography is not really like that. And photos can be very dangerous. If you're like an amateur photographer, I, I always hear the like, oh, reflections of like clouds in a building, or there's definitely some like cheesy tropes in photography that you want to stay far away from. But I would say in general, um, I definitely recommend putting in like some stuff that's not just your studio work. And I just ended with this um, Hitler quote because I was really into media theory at the time. Um, but yeah, uh, just some like general thoughts as well. Um, what was I? I think that uh, taking a year off is like the best thing I did because when you're in school, you're kind of under this huge pressure to produce. I don't know if you guys are doing thesis, but thesis can be a very, very stressful time. And you're kind of just like producing, producing and taking that year off to have the ability to think critically about your work and also what you want to do in grad school is a really, really important. And I think part of what got me into the schools I applied to was um, just like knowing like knowing what I wanted to do and being like very adamant that this is what I wanted to do. And it totally, like, I've honestly done a 180. It doesn't matter at all if that's something you carry through, but I think like it shows that you have like ideas and that you have like a research direction and um, at least like feel strongly about certain things. I think a lot of people think grad school is just about like getting that MR degree and becoming an architect, but it's actually a lot more than that. And I think like having strong opinions like helped me a lot. Um, I think a a big part of um, my application was also my personal statement. I tried to find it and I couldn't find it. So I'm sorry about that. But um, I think like having that extra year between, like I also worked during that year, but having that extra year during, after graduating and starting grad school is I think the most important thing for me. Okay, thank you Inch for sharing. That was really insightful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was just like a lot of good advice. Uh, we have yeah. one chat, which, is not related completely to portfolios, but what was it about landscape architecture that made you go back to architecture? Oh, um, it was totally personal. No hate on landscape architects. I, I actually like 
like, so I applied to um, uh, Princeton, MIT, and Harvard, but Harvard Landscape. And I, looking back, I was like, why did I apply to Harvard Landscape, not both? And I got into, hey, um, I, I got into all three. And then I had that like hard decision to make where I was like, I was still like a little bit on the fence. But um, for me, Lance, like, when I went to Berlin and I worked at a life architecture firm and I think it might have been like the type of firm I was working at they were very like they were just like, old guys like they're like landscapes like painting and all the project like they would there was just like not enough it was like a very slow environment and I wanted that like fast. like when I worked in architecture firms it was much more fast paced and I felt like there was a lot more learning to be done um and I also felt like the impact of a building in its own way can be have like a different time scale than that of, of an urban space so I don't know. It just felt right. I mean, a lot of it is gut feeling as well, but no shade to landscape architects. And I think also the other thing with, with the G, I mean, I can talk more about all these schools because I have a lot of friends at all of them, but um, the size of the program was a big thing. MIT and Harvard and Princeton, they're all very different schools. Um, and for me, the size of the program was a big thing. Like at U of T, I don't know if it was the time that I was there, but it was a really, really tiny, or sorry, it was a really, really large program. Like they kind of ignored the undergrads. Like it was just, we were there to make the school money. Like it, there wasn't a lot of investment on us. Um, and I was like, I really would love to go to a school where I'm like one of 20 or 30 and like I can find a research niche and I can kind of like be a part of the school and more than just like showing up to class. Um, so that was like a big driver in my decision as well. Okay, makes sense. And we have one more question, which is where and when did you work during your time at U of T and how did you get or learn about those opportunities? Um, so I, my first, my first job was at a small, um, residential architecture firm in North York and it was called Eisen Architecture. It was kind of a cool, like, I actually really loved them. I mean, I was doing like, it was a cold, like cold application. Um, like I was just emailing architecture firms, like, will anyone hire me? Like the foot in the door part is the hardest part and no offense to UP, but like, I was not getting any professional opportunities through profs there and I needed money. So I just like emailed a bunch of firms and they hired me but then every after that I worked at a firm called Quadrangle um which is local Toronto firm and that was like super corporate they didn't tell me that I was being hired on the feasibility and I was really mad um but it was still kind of cool working in that design phase and then since I also worked at KPMB um for a summer but the foot in the door part you just have to send out email applications basically but all my other jobs were through um contacts I had made like at those firms um, one other thing that I thought about recently that no one, ugh, I, like I have some problems with you, please, but like no one told me to log my hours. So if you guys are interning for the love of God, like record your hours and start your like experience for licensure. No one ever told me that I would be halfway there at this point. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to start over. Um, so if any of you guys are interning, like please <laughs> record your hours. It's really important. Or at least you'll be very grateful that you did. Um, I have a question for you. Um, is there any reason why you like specifically chose to only apply to like American schools for your master's instead um, of like any in Canada or just because you wanted so I actually new? <laughs> I, I I did not think I was gonna get into any of these schools. Like I I had moved to Germany and I applied to European schools and I actually didn't get into like half of them or most of them because I my portfolio was very like not in Europe, they want like very applied, like you know how building works, like you're interested in like very technical, practical things. And I was really not. Um, now I am, but not when I came out of UT. And so I had moved to Germany and I was like, okay, I'm I'm living in, in Berlin now, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm I'm gonna apply to these three schools like just for fun, basically. And I, then I got in and I was like, oh crap, like <laughs> I just it was like also COVID had just happened. So I got in like two weeks before COVID. So it was like all a huge mess. Um, but yeah, like I, I did, I knew I didn't want to go to any Canadian schools. Basically, I was like, okay, like I want to live in Europe, but if there were any schools I could go to, that were are not European schools, either the three I would pick. And then I kind of got like I like I just kind of got blindsided by my acceptance. But yeah, I, I guess the one thing I would say also is like, all the master's programs are very different. So like talking to students about um, like. 
I, I kind of like, I kind of knew what I was into. And so I was able to narrow down my choices to different schools. But I also have friends who like went to schools that, that they were like, oh, I didn't know this was like the MO of the school. Like schools have like certain things that they're interested in, and, like certain research groups. So like, if you know you want to think about like circularity and materials or energy conservation, like certain like very niche things, like there are schools that have research groups in those things. So if you're applying and they see that on your application, um, they'll, you probably like have a better chance. Um, and then also not, and not everything's just about getting in, it's also about like, will I enjoy my time there? Are there like these research opportunities that I wanna be a part of? And um, there are schools that are more research-based like MIT. And then there's some schools where like the GSD where there's like a higher emphasis on um, more like a classical um, architectural education and representation. Mm -hmm.